dear friends in this uh, lecture we are going to discuss uh, the uh, defenses of uh, innovative industries limited uh, represented by mr abhishek manu singh we senior counsel what are the facts the facts of the case are very simple as discussed already in the previous lectures is that there was a resolution plan which was presented by the resolution professional to the committee of creditors however the resolu uh, resolution that plan was could not muster the 75% voting share and uh, therefore uh, the adjudicating authority um, ordered for liquidation of the company that is the issue now the they went to appellate authority and appellate authority also upheld the judgment of the uh, nclt and that is being assailed before the honorable supreme court what are all the possible defenses the facts are like this the uh, committee of creditors those financial creditors who rejected were about 33% and uh, they have not assigned any reasons why they are rejecting it that is the one loopholes they have found number 2 they if you take into consideration only those people who attended the coc and voted for the plan the plan masters above 66% three during the intervening period the ordinance came which amended that section to 66% voting share is sufficient so the contentions of them manu singh we that uh, uh, senior counsel is that we should be looked at uh, as if this is passed the interpretation should be such that it must have got that uh, approval in defense of that they try to prove that if you are the the procedure and the manner are being discussed first and foremost step is they said that uh, if uh, if only that uh, a number of people who attended the meeting and voted is they can you would have passed the test of 75 the people who have rejected without giving any reasons they had malefied intentions and therefore that uh, cannot be considered three the ordinance uh, which uh, recognized this problem and then brought it down from 75 to 66% and at the time of nclat pronouncing the judgment it was 66% they should have taken a retrospective uh, application of the amendment and they tried to canvass that it is not a mandatory provision it is only a directory provision and uh, hence it should be retroactive and uh, the <coughs> defense in def what are the um, citations and how that was uh, uh, considered is to be taken for it is a very good contention of the Uh, Mr. Abhishek Manu Singhvi. He was uh, talking about uh, the concept of uh, what is the duty cast upon the committee of creditors. That is the first issue he took up. He says that uh, committee of creditors are the custodians of public interest. They are under statutory duty to exercise its power. under section 30 subsection 4 reasonably and fairly so he is trying to introduce the doctrine of reasonability and fairness by citing that the role of coc is basically driven by public interest they are custodians of public interest because uh, uh, the employees the company employs so many people their livelihood will be affected the company produces uh, valuable goods uh, that will have impact on foreign exchange as well as uh, gdp and uh, there are a lot of stakeholders 
who have uh, the money uh, uh, the banks public government banks are basically funded out of tax uh, taxpayers money if you are uh, going to revive that then that will be safer rather than going for liquidation where they may not be even getting 10% of it so in all view the first step is he try to conclude that the function of coc that is being performed is a in the nature of a public interest function and therefore the doctrine of uh, reasonability and fairness must be read in now he also went further um the object of the code is uh, to revival uh, rather than liquidation so you must give all the possible efforts uh, efforts to see that the plan is revived the company is revived and uh, there is an obligation upon coc to adopt a resolution plan which expresses more viable than liquidation so now is comparing between uh, liquidation if you go for liquidation what is this what is in store for you instead if this plan is considered what is the uh, betterment that is the basis on which a liquidation decision has to be taken is was his argument and he says he is uh, they are been emphasizing on the uh, nature of this uh, 75% uh, which has in turn come down to 66% as a declaratory and uh, clarificatory in nature and therefore retrospective effect must be given so first step is uh, when uh, coc is uh, doctrine of fairness means when you don't like the plan and you are going to reject can you reject it on the basis of thinking that it is uh, plainly um, the based on uh, i don't want to give any reasons i will uh, reject it can you take that stand that is uh, the issue he believed that uh, the committee of financial creditor when he is going to reject the plan or is going to approval he must give a uh, reason uh, and approach it in a fair manner that is the quinty essence of the uh, court reason so given would demonstrate whether it is a bona fide or malicious act of the financial creditors that is now clarified and restated by amending the regulation 393 which has the, come into force with effect from 4th july being clarificatory amendment the same would take retrospectively and is applicable even to the pending proceedings he further went uh, uh, when such situation is coming that is they are not giving reasons they are not able to give reasons when you can read malfides uh, then the court should exercise its power um, to strike down that arbitrariness the that is what is uh, Uh, whether the power is being exercised with malfeasance intention or not uh, that was also is uh, you want to buttress his argument pleading to the honorable judge now he took up uh, the issue of mardia chemicals limited and others was you other was union of india in case of uh, surface act there uh, they have introduced that fairness and reasonableness under section 13 of this act surface act there the court declared the reasons must be given and communicated this reading in of the principle of fairness and reasonableness was eventually codified in the form of section 13 sub section 3a of the act such interpretation was inexorable in respect of provisions as draconian as section 30 sub section 4 which results in inevitable consequence of liquidation of the corporate debtor affecting all the stakeholders the provisions of inb code must be so construed as not to be financial credit eccentric that is one more pleading the code is is it meant only for financial creditor is it a financial creditor centric no it should be uh, focused on all the stakeholders operational creditors financial creditors workmen the government and all and uh, this is this is because a uh, recently also in another judgment uh, the object of doing a very good business uh, to make sure the business prospers economy prospers all types of uh, 
stakeholders interest must be considered if you are going to curtail the trade credit uh, by uh, squeezing the uh, uh, operational credit cards then there won't be money from flowing from them which is also very vital to the uh, business environment after all this is an economic legislation that is what is the issue discussed uh, then here um, uh, further to that finance uh, but an inclusive approach where all stakeholders interests are balanced and particularly for exploring the pa- exploring the possibility of revival of the corporate data and maximization of the value of the assets in the present case what is happening in the present case the dissenting financial creditors uh, before the adjudicating authority they took the stand they uh, they had taken a stand this is a commercial decision and it was not open to judicial scrutiny it is a settled law that uh, commercial decisions economic decisions of economic nature cannot be tested by the judiciary and must be left to the wisdom of the uh, businessman even if it is a commercial decision uh, it must fulfill the test of reasonable and fair fair approach to be supported by a tangible reasons in the absence of reasons that is very emphasizes then the absence of reasons the adjudicating authority uh, must have exercise its jurisdiction to ascertain whether the exercise of power by the coc is reasonable and is in conformity with the corporate act that is the point that so he again went further to say that suppose the reason, resolution plan is otherwise viable suppose the resolution plan is much better to the stakeholders compared to the um, liquidation and uh, the, re- the rejecting financial creditors have not given their reasons and they have al- mal- acted with malfied intention even if such is a kind of commercial decision it has the court must is not powerless and it should uh, uh, use its power to look into that uh, and then take a decision that was the point uh, well drafted and thought of